I want to read from Matthew, Matthew's account of the birth narrative. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that uh, today your Holy Spirit would be present with us. I invite you to be here with us and to move among us and open up our hearts and our eyes and our ears. And Father, I pray that your Spirit would fill me and speak through me. And that nothing that I say would be out of line with your will, but just give me the words you want me to say today. In Jesus' name, amen. Tom Beasley was his name. I only knew him as an old man who was an elder in the church in Linden, Tennessee, down in Perry County. The Linden Waverly exit goes south on Highway 13, and you'll get there. It's an hour and a half drive from here. I know it because I drove it on Sunday mornings. I don't know how you do part-time youth ministry. Walter Sardaki, you, you'll have to help me on that one, but I tried it for about two years. But Tom Beasley was one of my elders down there. And incidentally, just before I go on, we wondered if uh, David Hughes was here. David's a Green Beret, so he's probably here. We just wouldn't know it if he was, so just, just know that. So I'm counting on David to kind of have my back. Tom Beasley, old man when I knew him. But on December 7th, 1941, the actual Pearl Harbor Day, he was there. He said he got awakened by the sounds of all this, these bombs and the, these, these machine guns and all this, all this sounds of war. And he said that his first thought was, they're really lighting it up there at that little island just offshore. There was an island where they'd done a lot of training missions, and his thought was they're out there training. But boy, it sure sounds louder than usual. And it wasn't long before... Tom found out what the world found out, that it wasn't just a training exercise. It was our entry into World War II. And I remember him telling me, I said, well, what'd you do? He said, I went over to the armory, and I checked out a .30-06 Springfield rifle and a bunch of ammunition. And he said, there was a, there was a softball field there that we played softball in, and I, I went over there to the bleachers, and I shot at the Japanese warplanes. And I'm just thinking about this old country boy from Tennessee he's sitting in the bleachers of a softball field shooting with a 30 out 6 at Japanese warplanes. I said, did you hit anything? Did you make any difference? He said, I don't know. But he said it was better than not doing anything. And I've just always, I can picture that story and, and just here's a guy just trying to make a difference. And I think about that a little bit whenever I read this account from, from Matthew chapter 1 because we, we fixate on so many dimensions of the birth narrative and, and the story of Jesus. And we've been talking all this semester about will we live in God's story. And we've been talking about all these different ways that all the Old Testament writers and everything points to the time where Jesus is going to come into this world. And now we're there. But one of the characters that sometimes doesn't get much play is Joseph. The best you can call him is Jesus. You know, we've call, heard him call him Jesus' earthly father. But Joseph is a guy that, that, to me, is a pretty remarkable character. And I just wanted to share what I see about Joseph in this story and let you go. And what I, I like about him a lot, and, and one of the things that I see in his character is, is it, it, it talks about, here he is, he's a guy that he's, he's somehow engaged to marry, he finds out that she's pregnant, and it says that he had in mind to put her away quietly. And what I love is that line, what he had in mind, what he had in mind to do. 
Because what I see in that is a, a man of an incredible character. If, if you were seriously betrothed to a woman and she came up pregnant, there'd be a lot of things that would run through your mind. And I don't know how long it took him to get to this place, but as he had reflected on it, he gets to the point where he's just going to try to do the most merciful possible thing. And I think today if we want to be people of character, we've got to reflect on what's, what's in our mind. What is the kind of thing that comes to our mind? What happens in our mind? What do we have in mind whenever difficult circumstances come? I think about that great text from the psalmist. He said, search me, O God, know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I particularly love the fact that the psalmist is praying for God to look at his anxious thoughts. Not, don't look at me when I'm at my best. You look at me when I'm really up against it. Look at me whenever I'm in crunch time. And what do you see? I like what I see in Joseph my, Joseph's mind, and I don't always like what I see in my own mind. And I really think that's, that's the battleground. I love what Paul said. He, he has a line about casting down imaginations and every high thing that is exalted against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I would love to be at the place where every thought was submitted to Christ. I like what I see in Joseph's mind but I like what I see in God's mind better. Joseph's got an idea. He's going to put her away quietly, but God has another idea. God has a better plan. And I love the fact that the angel says, comes to me and says, okay, you know, I know you're trying to put her away, but don't be afraid to take her into your house. The baby she's carrying is from the Holy Spirit, and so he's going to, he's going to give them a different route. And God's plan, I'll just be very clear, I believe God's plan is always a better plan. It's not an easier plan, but it's always a better plan. Whatever we have in mind can always be improved by what God has in mind. And I, I love that text from Proverbs that says, Commit your way to the Lord and your plans will succeed. I think we get it backwards sometimes. We want to we wanna make our plans and then commit to the Lord. But if we will be the kind of people that commit our ways to the Lord, God leads us in some amazing ways. He had, a, he had something in mind. God had something better in mind. But then I really like the idea that... Uh, when he woke up from the dream, the first thing he did was went and acted. He went and did something. And I think that sometimes what happens to us, particularly with our ambitions and the idealism that we have sometimes on a college campus, is we get these wonderful ideals, but we never do anything with them. A great line from recovery, a friend of mine recovering from alcohol said, you know, I picked up this line, and it's a good one. He said, I judge myself by my intentions. I found out other people judge me by my actions. And as good a game as we might talk sometimes, the only scene we have of judgment in Matthew 25 is that simple place in Matthew, Matthew 25 that says, I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and in prison. You came to visit me. And what I really love about Joseph, I don't know if old Tom made a difference shooting at those Japanese warplanes, but I know that one guy back in history made an incredible difference because he said, I'll be used by God as inconvenient as it might be and as scandalous as it might be. And my biggest takeaway from Joseph is one man, one woman can make a huge difference. And my takeaway for all of us as we leave this place for the Christmas season is one person can make a huge difference.